Now, in your documentary, Age of Delirium, there's so many fascinating stories that you covered in there, from the train to the to the buried printing press. Um, and then when you combine all these different stories with the apartment bombings, it's, it's easy to see how you you adopted this clear vision of what was going on over there and how these people are living in their a completely different reality. Right. Can you exp can you explain what what was the story uh and where were you at in your career in Moscow at the point when you were on the train and you got your briefcase stolen? Oh, well that was I had just arrived. I had just arrived. The film describes that 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 incident. I was making uh in those days I mean this was this was the 1970s. I was 29 and in a, you know I was experienced by some standards but very inexperienced you know if you kept in mind just the, the, the complexity of the task that I that I had carved out for myself which mm. was to understand the Soviet Union in any case, most of the correspondents in Moscow did not travel alone. Uh, they considered it was considered dangerous. Mostly, their trips were arranged by the Soviet authorities that they had, and many of them didn't have the language. Mm -hmm. uh, I was beginning to get the language, but it was still a little bit wobbly. Um, and I took that, uh, uh, and I decided to visit the Baltic republics and to meet there with democratic dissidents and national, nationalists in the Baltic republics. And that was unusual for a Western correspondent to travel alone. Uh, and uh, they uh, uh, arranged for me to have... As you know, and they of course they controlled you know where I would be sitting, who would be in the compartment, and they put uh, two very good-looking girls and a a uh, another guy in the compartment with me. <laughs> and uh, you know, out of sheer inexperience, I thought I you know, I assumed that uh, that was random. I well, I, I suspected that it wasn't random. But, but it was just so fantastic, <laughs> and the, and I must say say the women were so attractive, and they were well chosen. I'll tell you that. That, um, and this was this is a long time ago, uh, and uh, I just put aside my doubts, maybe because I wanted to. Who knows? You know, it was a very tempting situation. But I was unmarried and a and, uh, young guy in, in a, new, a strange country. And uh, the, 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 the one of the girls went, got into a bunk with one of the, the with the male guy, with the, the, with who was, and the other with, got into the upper bunk with me and you, weren't you guys like taking shots of cognac or something oh yeah they had given <laughs> us no we, we had tea they had tea and oh. there was some there was some kind of sedative in the tea oh. that also you know relaxed whatever resistance i <laughs> had which was not particularly great anyway but the uh now as i think back on it um and this uh i mean this happened in 1976 Seven, so a good, uh, a good long time ago. A good, you know, now it's forty-five years ago. But, but in any case, uh, and then what? You know, while I was occupied with this woman, uh, the, the my briefcase was stolen, and my notes were taken, and the the the. Uh, KGB got a hold of the addresses of the people that I was supposed to see, and they and I was met at the train station uh, by the police. I gave a statement, and then at at uh, when I went to my hotel, uh, I was encounter 
I was encountered by, while I was standing in line to register at the hotel, uh, someone came up to me and uh, offered to shake hands and then left a piece of paper in my hand. And there was <clears throat> on the piece of paper a telephone number and a message said, call this number from an automatic telephone. And I realized that this was either the dissidents who were trying to get hold of me or the KGB, and I wasn't sure who it was who now wanted to get hold of me. It was a situation was just something absolutely fantastic for a Amer young American in, in the Soviet Union with no previous experience of the police state atmosphere there. You know, to have, I was without my suitcase, without uh, including, uh, you know, things I, I, I needed and, and notes I had taken. Uh, and so I, 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 uh, I made the call from a, you know, from a public telephone. And I told myself that if the, the voice that answered was Estonian, if they spoke with an Estonian accent, I would assume it was the dissidents. But if it was, if they spoke in you know a clear, unaccented Russian, I would assume it was the KGB. Well, they the the voices uh, were Estonian, and I um, we ended up uh, arranging a meeting, and I spent three days with people who convinced me that they were the Estonian dissidents, and uh, uh, it was only when I got back to Moscow that I got a message that the Estonian dissidents had never met with me. And I had spent all this time not with the people I thought I was spending the time with, but with KGB agents who were impersonating dissidents. You know, this is an experience, but it taught, you know, it, it taught me the fundamental lesson, which is uh, in the Soviet Union, seeing is not necessarily believing. And uh, that story, which, by the way, is, is included in my, in my book, Never Speak to Strangers, which is a compil just recently released as a compilation of my articles over 40 years. Uh, you know, I described this incident. And uh, that tells you everything you need to know about the nature of the Soviet Union, that you know, that person stepping out of the shadows, he can be anyone. Wow. And what was the story with the... It was fascinating seeing that printing press that was buried under a flower bed. He had a... There was this giant trough of flowers and then like a big water pail. He had to like crank to move to the side under like a giant two-foot slab of concrete. And you guys climbed underneath this concrete slab, and you had this massive printing press. How common was th were things like that? Well, this was what they had to do in uh, this was in the Baltic republics. Uh, the The example of that print underground printing press, which was used, I think, to is to pr print a publication called the Chronicle of the Lithuanian Catholic Church which was uh, a, 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 a unofficial publication which contained a lot of information about nationalist activities in Lithuania, uh, that, uh, that was perhaps more elaborate than uh, other methods that were used. I mean, in, in Moscow itself, where you had a lot of people who sympathized with the democratic movement, uh, uh, the Chronicle of Current Events, which was a, a s also an unofficial publication, but on the basis of the entire country, not just Lithuania, uh, was, was produced because there were hundreds of people who would type up copies at home with, uh, wow. with many with many uh, cop they what they would do is they would get a single copy and then they would put in their typewriters five sheets and five sheets of carbon paper and uh, and retype and that was going on and that was the samizdat mach samizdat is the russian 
term for self-publishing. Sam is self, is dot is published. Sam is dot means self-publishing. And the Sam is dot machine in Moscow and St. Petersburg, which are the big cities, uh, was uh, involved, uh, you know, a lot of people, certainly, certainly scores, probably hundreds, who would get uh, copies of this forbidden literature, forbidden unofficial literature, and they would, you know, retype it. So each person could produce five copies, and then those five copies would be given to five people who would produce an additional five copies. Uh, and, and it, you know, it would, it would multiply. So, uh, but the, but the uh, printing press in, in uh, Lithuania that was featured in the film, that was, you know, there are things like that also happened. There were also cases where people... Uh, simply, you know, dug out of uh, bunkers, w- which you know, which were hidden from the authorities, and uh, piece by piece constructed, uh, uh, you know, underground presses and and produced material which was then.